Welcome back. We are uh, going to continue along here in the different trials of Jesus that he went through after he was he was arrested, leading up to the um, the uh, crucifixion and subsequent resurrection. Uh, we've talked about the arrest and all the things that were uh, illegal and and uh, unique about that, and then his first trial before Annas. And then his second trial before Caiaphas, uh, and if you recall, Annas uh, could not find any any accusation to or any charge to bring, bring against him. He sends him to Caiaphas, and there, um, completely illegally, uh, Caiaphas comes up with this charge of blasphemy, which, according to uh, Jewish law, is deserving of stoning. Uh, but they are, as you recall, an occupied country, so Rome is in charge, so they need to, um, they, we're, we're going to find out here how they're going to change some things to make it somewhat valid or at least significant to, uh, to Roman law. We're going to talk about uh, the Roman Code of Criminal Procedure, so that'll be fun. Uh, but uh, let's, let's jump right in here. This is the third trial. Um, and uh, if you know anything about the harmony of the Gospels, that's a whole different topic. Uh, but we've jumped around. Uh, Mark had a bunch of info about the second trial. We're going to look at Luke primarily, to at least starting off here. We'll see how far we get. Uh, we're going to look, look at uh, Luke chapter 22 for the uh, information on the third trial. Uh, so with the harmony of the gospels, it's just interesting. Once once you have all four, you can you can everything lines up so so perfectly and precisely, and and a bunch of information uh, comes together to uh, and that's where the word harmony comes from. It, it joins together perfectly um, to get a, to communicate and to get a, a, a complete truth across. So. Anyway, the first two trials, Annas and Caiaphas, those were under the cover of darkness. They happened at night. Um, at the, by the time those two trials are over, Jesus is bleeding and bruised, uh, and there's still no official verdict cast upon his life. Um, not, since everything so far had been under in, in, in darkness, that would not be recognized as official by the Romans. Uh, so they, he, Jesus is carted off to the Sanhedrin Council. So uh, we can we can look at at Luke chapter 22. We're going to look at verse 66 is where this starts, and um, it just says this. It starts off when it was day, the council of elders of the people assembled, uh, and kind of the point there, what's implied is as soon as the sun came up, they were they were ready. Uh, everyone had gotten their their phone call and uh, knew knew. All right, there's going to be something happening. Um, kind of like you know lining up at the grocery store when you know a few minutes before the the place is going to open, so you can get in there get in there right away. They are all ready to go when it was day. So immediately. Um, the council of elders of the people assembled, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council chamber, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. And this is going back to what we talked about uh, last time with the, um, the pleading the, the fifth, the right to remain silent, and the, the law that they had established or had put in place to protect themselves against killing the Messiah, uh, where the Messiah is is required to answer. So, no, Jesus does not have to answer for himself because they, they have the right to remain silent. But since Jesus is the Messiah, he is required to answer this question under their law, le legally. So... Um, This is the highest court. Uh, this is the this is the final. They have the final say. Whatever the Sanhedrin comes up with, their what what they say um, is declared law. So um, this is 
th this is this is secure. This is this is sealed. So let's go ahead and and read this. He's, they say, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he, Jesus, that he said to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask a question, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man, and this is going back to Psalm 110, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So he answers um he's he answers with a with a question and he's kind of he's messing with them there uh kind of um he doesn't answer directly because he's kind of putting them in their place he's teaching them something about themselves uh with this I'll ask you but you're not going to believe you it doesn't matter what I say you are set in your ways you have you have established something you have um, done all this with an agenda in mind and nothing I do or say it, it just it just doesn't matter you're gonna do what you're gonna do so he's um, and and what that does just think about um, what a judge or what a jury would do if they were if they were told that that takes any any rational any um, any logical thought option away from them they are he's he is proclaiming to them that they are stuck in their ways and um that they're whatever you want to call that stubbornness or 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 um strong willed or or whatever um but he's 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 teaching them something he's forcing them before they make this pronunciation on his life he's telling them who they are uh, ahead of time uh, he says, if I tell you, you will not believe. If I ask a question, you won't answer. He's saying, you know, you're not, you're not going to change your mind. Um, you won't even, you won't even think logically, rationally, uh, whatever. Essentially, he's saying, just so you guys know, I know that this is not a fair trial. I know that this is a complete bias, complete one-sidedness, complete uh, illegal. Um, nobody did the separating and spending a day thinking and um, and then coming back and, and convening. He, he's basically saying, I, I know who you are, I'm, I, and, I'm, and I'm here standing here calling you out on it. So he doesn't give them the answer that they're, that they're looking for. He doesn't give them any answer really they don't care <laughs> because they they sort of know know who they are so in verse 70 it says and they all said are you the son of god then and he said to them yes i am he's not saying yes he is he's saying yes he is the son of god and then he's saying I am, which means he's saying, yes, I'm the son of God. By the way, I am fully God. And that is just, well, it's Jesus. So it's true. But to them, that is just the most ridiculous, most extreme, most amazing, most um, fantastical thing that that a Jewish person could ever could ever hear just to just to say those those words uh especially with the power that Jesus is able to say that's that's a big deal uh it says then they said what further need do we have of testimony for we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth it's that simple the third trial was the shortest of all the trials um, Jesus, in their mind, was guilty. Um, besides Nicodemus, who acquiesced in silence, they voted unanimously to take him to Pilate. The charge: blasphemy. They have heard it. He says right there, "We have, we have heard it from his, from his own mouth." The charge is blasphemy, but that's not going to stand up in a Roman court. So he's he's charged, but they need something different 
The Romans don't care about blasphemy. Caesar's a god. Caesar says, hey, bring, you want to bring your gods? Great. No, no big deal. They were, they were uh, a fairly all-inclusive kind of uh, religious system, if, if you want to call it that. And so it didn't really matter if somebody claimed to be God. Uh, that wasn't offensive to anybody. Uh, so they, they finish at the Sanhedrin. They have something that they want to kill him for, but they know this isn't going to cut it with Pilate. They know he's just going to say, so what? He says he's your God. Well, what, what, what do I care? So what they need to do is they need to convince Pilate that this guy is worth sen sentencing to death. And what would it take to get Pilate to think that, to believe that, and to ultimately pronounce that over, over Jesus' life? What could they say? What could they do? And we're going to learn here in a second. They needed to switch it to treason. Because if they can convince Pilate that Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth man, is trying to overthrow the government, well, that's something that Pilate needs to take take notice of take, and, um, and, and pay attention to. So... Uh, they, they plan to switch to treason. Um, it says in, in 23 1, then the whole body of them got up and brought him before Pilate. So that finishes the third trial. Now we're into the fourth trial, which will be the first one. Just a, just a quick heads up. He's going to have a trial before Pilate and then a trial before Herod and then a second trial back before Pilate. And that'll, that's the, that's the end of it. So that's the, the second half of the, of the six trials. So the law is no longer the Talmud. The law is now the Roman code of criminal procedure. Uh, there were four steps that they must follow to make this an accurate court of law. And we'll go through them, uh, one by one. We'll go through each step of the Roman code of, of criminal procedure. Uh, but before we do that, here's a little background on Pilate. Uh, he was an anti-Semitic, Spain-born Gentile. He was appointed by Caesar to govern Judea. He is what we would call the governor of the state, though in those days they had provinces. Pilate was a marked man in the mind of Caesar and also his court because of the number of revolutions that had broken out under his rule. He had made some unwise decisions. He had murdered some Jews. He had tightened the screws of Roman requirements, and he lacked diplomacy. Therefore, the state over which he served was in turmoil. So uh, what it comes down to is um, he's put in charge of this Jewish province of the Roman Empire. The Jews kicked back a lot at that uh just and that's that that had been going on for for hundreds of years whoever had been because they'd been an occupied territory or occupied na nation i guess you'd say uh since babylon since since the assyrians since and then medo persia and then greece and that and now rome um they've been an occupied nation for for hundreds and hundreds of years and they're getting sick of it and they're pushing back they're kicking back against it and Pilate is that is sent down there by Caesar to uh, wrangle these people into in, in 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 order in line get these people under control and Pilate's having uh, a heck of a time doing that and every time something would flare up uh, Pilate is um, yeah, he's 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 on the he's on the hook for it, and it's kind of like, all right, Caesar's saying uh, you're you gotta you gotta do something. So um, Caesar uh, he left him there as the governor, but uh, and we know this from secular history, uh, Pilate was under investigation at this particular time. A uh, little jumping to the future after the trial and death of Jesus. 
because uh, that was a that was a big deal. Um, Pilate was banished to Gaul, and while he was there, he died of suicide. When you know that, and you then you then you look at look at the hindsight, knowing what the future is. Um, Pilate was a very unstable man, um, and because of a few political maneuverings on his part, he became the governor of the of the province. So that's who this guy is. He's he's not stable. He's um, he's he's always getting in trouble himself because he can't manage this this group that he is over, and uh, and and that's yeah that that's who he is. So. Uh, we're going to go back to John 18, and we'll look at this account uh, before Pilate. John 18, verse 28, it says, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium, and it was early, and they themselves did not enter into the praetorium, so that they would not be defiled but might eat the Passover. So here's the thing. They were criminal in their attitude. These, these high priests and, um, and Sanhedrin council, they're straight, they're, they're criminals here. But they were so legal in their religion. The Talmud stated that no Jew could enter a Gentile court on Passover or he would be defiled. So they stayed out of the court itself. And apparently... Uh, Pilate came out to them. It says uh, in, in verse 29, so moving along there, uh, but might, so that they might, would not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Therefore, Pilate went out to them. So he's going to come out and go back uh, several times just because he's sort of forced to because he has to deal with this mob of people and they won't enter into his court, so he's going to do this, going, going out and um, coming back, back in, and uh, so that, yeah, that, that's going to happen several times. So, Roman code of of uh, criminal procedure: uh, the first step is accusation. This won't be like mind blowing to you about what what they do. It's going to look fairly um, fa fairly familiar. So the first first step is, or the, or the first law, is accusation. And that's what Pilate's going to start with. So verse 29 and 30, Therefore Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said unto him, and they don't answer, uh, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you, which yeah, it's kind of, kind of, kind of strange. It's it's sarcasm, and it doesn't answer Pilate's question. He's like, all right, he, he's he's just following the the letter of the law. What's the accusation? Let me let's write it down. Let's 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 make notes. What is, what are what are we all here for? Well, if he wasn't an evildoer. If he wasn't guilty, we wouldn't have brought him to you. All right, great, thanks. That's 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 helpful. Um, but they they say he's he's an evil doer. Uh, so Pilate says, "Take him yourselves." So Pilate said to them, "Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law." All right, so he's done something wrong. Judge him according to your law. You guys, I don't need to babysit you here. You you go do what you need to do. And he still doesn't know what's what he's done. They're not they're not talking to him. They're not telling him yet. And their response is, the Jews said to him, second half of verse thirty one, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. And the way I kind of see this, the you know they're not they're not answering directly. Um, it's like they're trying to get into Pilate's head to build this guy up before they even say what it is the the, the problem is. Um, 
I guess I kind of see it like in in one of our courts where um, somebody somebody gets up in the courtroom and there's a jury and he says this person you know was it, it is something just stating something about the accused person and then there's an objection and the judge says uh all right uh jury you need to disregard what that guy just said the jury can't forget that it's a strategy it's a it's a it's an effective strategy because it's put something in the jury members mind that now they're like okay well i'm i can't not forget that i can't unhear that and it's like i guess i kind of see it like that why don't they just tell them tell them what it is and the problem is what it actually actually is isn't true it isn't legitimate but they've got to build it up so that so that pilots already thinking something before they actually tell them so when they do tell them he's already kind of in that in that mode so that i i don't know that that's that's what i kind of see the the sarcasm as as a strategy of the of the high priest and and sanhedrin council so uh they say we can't we're not allowed to put anyone to death which implies this is a this is a big deal um so uh the other the other gospels we're, we we won't take the time right now to, to look at the the other they declare at this point now you know what he's guilty of treason and that he claims to be another caesar so um, we can we can read verse 32 to fulfill we are not permitted to put anyone to death to fulfill the word of jesus which he spoke signifying by what kind of death he was brought he, he was about to die verse 33 therefore pilate entered again into the praetorium so he goes back entering into the praetorium means he went out of his court the praetorium and now he has um let's say receded back it says entered again just just from your vantage point and summoned jesus and said to him are you the king of the jews so uh this is th this begins this the second law or second stage of roman criminal code uh so there's the accusation first and now this begins the interrogation uh and the point here as, as you can imagine to probe and search for evidence against the man and that's what happens in in these in these next three verses here are you the king of the jews probing question jesus answered are you saying this on your own initiative or did others tell you about me Pilate says, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests delivered you to me. What have you done? So here's another probing question. What have you done? Are you the king of the Jews? What have you done? And, and 36. This is, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's how Jesus answers my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then my servants would be fighting so that i would not be handed over to to the jews but as it is my kingdom is not of this world he's saying if 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 this is what it was all about this world if my kingdom was here on earth I would have uh, what does a kingdom have a kingdom has an army a kingdom has a leader okay so Jesus would be that leader and they would have he would have his army or militia or something like that and there, there's there's none of that there and he so he's saying no my kingdom's not in this world he's not saying he's not the king of the Jews but he's he's saying my kingdom is not of this world uh 
If Jesus wanted to overthrow the government, his servants would be fighting, carrying on a revolution, taking lives, storming this temple, ruining this procedure. But you don't even find my servants out there. You don't find my my people out there. So uh, now it's it's on to the third third process of the Roman Code. This is called defense. Pilate, acting behalf, on behalf of a defense attorney, begins to look at this side of Jesus. Uh, by the way, the Roman law, much like American law, allowed for a defense attorney, but you never find where Jesus was allowed that. So Pilate looks at it from Jesus' point of view. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. And Pilate, therefore, Pilate said to him, verse 37, so you are a king? Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify, this is so huge, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Uh, that's... That's a, maybe you already know, maybe that's familiar to you, but this is a, this is a, a big thing. Um, because Pilate answers, Pilate's, not answers, but Pilate says to him, what is truth? This has nothing to do with the case. The, it's, it's like they're having, Pilate's now having this side conversation. Um, he's not playing defense attorney anymore. He's not interrogating. He's not, he, it's a, it's, it's strange. It has to do with Pilate's mindset. He was a very mixed up, miserable man. In a matter of months after this, he would be taking his own life. He is in a quandary regarding the area of objective, sound truth. And so he says, what is truth? Um, I, I, don't think he's, I don't think he's looking for an answer. I think he's saying this. He's making this statement not as an attack on Jesus, but out of just straight up confusion. He doesn't have an absolute truth in his life. He doesn't have an absolute moral guide in his life. He doesn't have um he he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of things. He doesn't have a support group. He doesn't have a a board of directors that he can trust. He doesn't have a boss that uh that thinks he's worth anything. Um and he's it's it's almost like when he says this, he's like looking up at the at the sky and like, yeah, right. What what is what is truth? When he had said this, he went out again because he didn't he didn't wait for a response or anything. When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. That's it. He's he's there's there's nothing there. Um, if we were to look at uh, let's just look at the Luke passage for what it says here. Luke 23, uh, verse four and five. Then the whole body of them got up and brought him for Pilate. Um, we want to look at verses four and five. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, "I find no guilt in this man, but." They kept on insisting, saying, he stirs up the people, teaching all over Judea, starting from Galilee, even as far as this place. So, when he, when he says that, and, and that's what we don't see in, in John here, um, he says, I find no, I find no guilt in him. Um, Pilate heard, hears the word Galilee. Well, that's way up north. That's a whole different um, section. It wasn't his jurisdiction. And he's like, hey, I'm going to find someone else 
to to deal with it. I just don't want to. I just don't want to get my hands on this. Just let's just make this go away. You say he's been in Galilee. Send him to Herod. So that's going to begin the um, the the fifth trial. So we're going to stop there for today. And uh, hopefully that's not too much of a cliffhanger, but maybe that'll make you come back next time. Uh, and we're going to start with the with the fifth trial uh, when we when we get back. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.